So hi, in Brno. I would like to talk about why you may need more than one dependency injection container in your application. Like, is there anyone who is doing this already? Okay, your hands up, please. So Sriggy, why are, why are you doing this? <laughs> okay, so, so again, why you have more than one dependency injection container in your application. Okay, okay, okay. So, so it looks like nobody is doing this. Okay. I will start with this picture. Like, this is a class, right? Account facades. That's just some kind of class. This class, uh, it has some public interface. It has some internals. Some sound familiar, right? What is this? This is some kind of module, like account, campaign, feedback. Like this is some, some sort of, like, uh, some part of application. What is doing like something with the one topic? It's kind of module. This thing also has like public interface. It has some internals. It has. Like, sounds familiar, like, same, same with the class, but here, this is just a folder, right? There is no explicit way how you can actually de declare what is public interface, what are dependencies of this one folder. And when you go, like, even, even further, like, there is application, is like UI application, this is Nete. There is C CLI interface, some libraries, and model. Hmm. The same problem here, like model exposes some classes like facades to application, application should use it, and application should not definitely use some private services from model. Right? Does it make sense? But problem is that it's not written anywhere. You just have to know that you don't want to use this service, this this service, and you want to use another service, because that service is public interface, and another is not, right? Another point of view is that your application is kind of single responsibility fractal, <laughs> so you can actually you can you can dive on any level. And there is some kind of sense, like there is some group of functionality that makes sense together and has some properties. Each level has its own public interface and internals, but sometimes it's not explici explicitly stated there. You just have to know. In some languages like Java, you can have modules, you can have public classes, private classes, so you can show you can actually specify it there. In PHP, we don't have something like that, so maybe we'll need to do something a little bit different than in Java. To make these things explicit, we need different tools. Because when you are on, when you are on a class level, you have classes, right? You have private properties, private methods, protected methods you have public methods. So you can actually do the... Uh, it's self-contained, right? But you can do this with folder. So back to this picture. This is like the top level view of like one of our applications. And when I draw dependencies, it looks something like this. There is application which depends on model, because it uses some methods from there, like register user, for example, or user has forgotten password, so it just can generate some token and then it sends email. And the application also depends on HTTP infrastructure, because model does not have, like, have like, no idea that it's running over HTTP, or it, it just don't care. But there is also modern in infrastructure, like for example, database connection, if it needs persistence, or other libraries, 
And CLI has, of course, another dependencies which are not drawn here. So I will dive a little bit more into this red square. So basically what we have here and what we want to model that more is these dependencies. Like you have application, you have model, and you want to state somewhere in your code that application depends on model. So let's do that. Uh, this this code is ba based on talk, I don't know, a few years ago from Jan Tvrdík, which from what I remember there there was no recording or I wasn't able to find it on the internet, unfortunately, because it was quite good talk. And uh, it was named Kolik DI Containerů Potřebuješ? So, and actually he pr uh, proposed their implementation and this is based on that. So you actually need to do two steps. In model, you specify a model extension, which is a class which extends from that library, from Jan Tvrdík. And in application, you say extensions, model, and you just like include that extension. What it does is like exactly this row here. You say that your application depends on model. That's all it does. But you know, um, word is not like always like theoretically perfectly nice. And sometimes you also, yeah, this is like the, the what, what you probably would expect, like model exports some services, right? For example, the account facade to the application. So how we do that in code? In model, you just say services. You know this from like every other application. But there is one special thing, and that is tags exported. This is just normal, normal tag, nothing special about it. But the extension, what you've seen in, in the previous slide, actually finds all the services in model, which has this tag, and it registers all of these services into application container. So then, it means that account facade, which has been exported from model to app, is out of wired in, in your application. That's quite cool because then when you have front-end developer, which is dealing with Neta, he can then use account facade in his presenters just by using inject or constructor injection or whatever. It just works. And dependencies of this facade, which can be database, it can be doctrine, it can be whatever, they are not available actually in, in the app. So it's really hard for this developer to actually overcome this interface. Like it's almost impossible to access a uh, database connection from your application if you don't export it. Right? So this is basically this the basically ends completely with like SQL query queries in your presenters. Because there is no way how to access connection if you don't export it from model. Sometimes you need also the opposite direction. For example, we are sending uh, SMS when there is some priority notification in our application. And we actually have the main concept which we call instant message. This instant message can be sent, but model actually don't care how it will be sent. So application which uh, provides this SMS interface actually has to in implement some interface from the model. So let's look how it looks like. So model has to explicitly state that it actually needs this interface, so it's instant message sender. It's just interface with message with method send. That's all it has. And there is factory method 
which references the container, the contain the uh, the auto container. The uh, this is basically the application container. And it calls get by type and it references again the instant message sender. This is exactly what this this arrow here is. It says that model depends on its user to provide this implementation. In application, you then state that you have this service, which is type of instant message sender. You can write it on one line if you want. This is just for like e example purposes because, uh, and here is the implement implementation, the actual implementation infrastructure model instant message instant message sender. So this is this is this is the code which actually sends the SMS. So there is separation of concerns. Like you you can do whatever you want with this. And why it works? Because there is the interface. That's all these two sides have to know about. So the outcome is that we have explicitly stated public interface of our module. Like there is no modules in PHP, but we can simulate it by at least on this dependency injection level. You can use for this also another s another things like uh, it's called PHP depth track, for example, which actually it's it basically tokenizes all your application code and finds all your references inside your code. And when it finds that you are referencing some class, it basically builds a graph of all your dependencies of all your classes. And you can say that this namespace cannot reference this namespace. So you can also do this like another way. But I actually like this uh, this way with dependency injection containers because it's explicitly stated in the code. So you can then just like click any ID and you see what, what's what's happening there. Another great outcome is that it's really hard to use private services from model because you have to put their really crazy code in your dependency injection container to actually get to the private services of your model. So basically we have, I think, only one reference to private service in whole code base and that's in test bootstrap. So basically no references there. So are you going to use something like this or what's your opinion on this? Can we start a small discussion here? Definitely. Definitely, you can. Yeah, um, this uses actually net dependency injection, but like the idea is completely general. You can re-implement re this in like any language in, in any dependency injection framework or any dependency injection container implementation. The extension actually has like one screen of code. It's really simple. So this is basically more the state of your mind when you are coding it than like some technical uh, technical thing and architecture uh, decisions based on this. It leads to these design patterns. Yeah, I like it because you know from this environment class years ago in that where was this global dependency injection container. Now we moved to the auto wiring, but still we are with auto wiring accessing one global big pool of services. And I think we need some kind of strictness in there, and I like this idea. Yeah, that, that's exactly why why actually I started doing this, because like the application can get quite big, and not all services are equal there. They actually has. It's not like one level. Like mm -hmm. there is, there is, there is this multi-level of uh, of modules and some kind of uh, separations. 
and it was not possible to do this actually in in previous times. Do you build these as uh, separate uh, composer packages and then um, hmm. kind of do it that way? Because that would it would allow you to do that, right? Yeah, definitely you can do that. I didn't do that because uh, I have all this project in one Git, Git repository, and that's because actually I think that uh, like it's a good idea to have one project with one life cycle. So you are deploying the whole thing together. Then it makes no sense to actually have like three, five, two composer packages, right? Because it's just one thing, right? So this is like more design decision than like infrastructure decision, which will lead into having more composer packages. Right, but if you were to share, for example, the model or some other model, yeah, you can other, do this. Like more project. Yeah, you definitely you can do this. Yeah. And I think that's actually quite a good idea. If you, for example, have some modular application which we're which will like export uh, some functionality into like your framework, or, I don't know, something like WordPress, like WordPress, let's say. Uh, this is actually a great way how to separate your application from the WordPress and like have defined interface, like what you are depending on and what you are exposing. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Anyone else who's going to use this, or who don't agree with me, that's like bullshit. <coughs> okay, maybe uh, uh, one question. When I heard about this uh, technique firstly, I just start thinking about using it for my small web pages. Mm -hmm. When I have two modules, front module and admin module, mm -hmm. and uh, the first uh, uh, security idea was Okay, in admin module I have some uh, facades who ca uh, they can uh, save deleted data, but uh, in front module I don't need to use these uh, classes facades. So my idea was okay, I will prepare two dependency injection containers, one from administration and second for the backend, uh, for front end. Is it the uh, right way or use it this? Like I would not recommend doing this, <coughs> doing it this way. Yeah. But definitely you can do that, do that, do that, and it will work. I would probably prefer to have like one package or one one module for model. Yeah. And then have two use like users of this one container model administration and your public interface, because uh, what I haven't said and what what we do there, and what actually works pretty well, is that when you actually have those exported services, which is <coughs> basically facades, like in most cases, like where to put your ACLs, like your permission controls, like exactly on the place, because it's your entry point into model. So then, there is actually no easy way how to overcome your ACLs and your permissions uh, which are configured there. So what we do there is that there is like identity provider which application calls and it registers user ID there and it extracts all roles and all the stuff we need to actually evaluate privileges. And then on every single API call of those of that uh, of that public facade from model, we actually check that you can do that. So when we have tests there, it always starts like become guest, become manager, become administrator, and then you do something. Because if you if you are just nobody, it will fail with like not allowed exception. You can't do this. So model is then more coherent because there is actually no way how to overcome this. Okay, any more questions, complaints? Okay, so I have one more thing there. Application is fractal, as I said before. So we have application part, 
with that applicable, that uh, explicitly stated public interface and dependencies. That's what <coughs> I've been talking here for the whole time. Dependency injection, more dependency injection containers. Then we have classes which has public interface and private methods and so on. We have functions which can have private private variables inside them. So we also have encapsulation. But we don't have anything for like these modules in the middle. Because it can be like you can actually have dependency injection for every single like this topic, let's say. But it would be really hard work actually. Because uh, you then have to think about like every single time you put service there, you have to think like in which dependency injection container you actually are, where you are exported, exporting it, and what will depend like who will depend on it. It's like it would be like crazy thing to man maintain. So I started discussion on a net forum like. If we could have some kind of meta dependency injection modules, which would actually mean that you would say <coughs> that this service will be out of wired only for this namespace. That would mean that um, <coughs> that would basically mean that you can do some kind of modules because uh, you can then have something like your private services when I go back. Let's say you have account some account private service. So you just like put their service and then it's then that then you just say that it's exported just into the account namespace. That would mean that if you use it in campaign it will just crash. That you like there is no service like that or you are not allowed to auto wire this service. Something like that. And you can have like, just normal service to use public interface for this module, just like account, let's say account facade, can be used by account namespace, because it's just normal service, you can just out the word. So it would be like super lightweight way how to actually do this, and I will discuss this with David and Lisbon. Anyone going to Lisbon, this, this window, Cool. Okay, so if you want to join this discussion, please scan this code. Or remember. Or remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like on forum in dependency injection category, and it's, I think, the third from the top because it's quite new. So, any more questions? Or if we, if you have like cute question, I can actually show you the code if you want, because I have it with me here. Show the code. Show the code. <laughs> <laughs> but I need a question to answer something, right? Yeah. Maybe on the beer later. <laughs> so I will print the code and show it on the beer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. Awesome. Okay, so I will do that. Right. So I will be here uh, in the evening if you have more more questions. I actually have to leave now, and I will change you back in later later hours. So thank you for your attention. You can follow me on Twitter if you want, and have a great time here. Thank you. Thank you.